thank you so much for the introduction, sir. Um, yes, my name is uh, Philipp Raas. I come from Germany, from the Georg August University. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my internship here at the moment. And today I want to talk about uh, research which I recently started. So what I'm presenting today is uh, just the basic part, the main part of uh, the work I will continue when I get back to Germany. So there will be a few conclusions and a few results able to be seen from the things that I will present today, but uh, still it's a work in progress. So, um, yeah, but I explain later on um, what I mean. So uh, today I'm going to talk about Marseille in the 13th uh, century. Uh, I chose as a title showing the development of uh, commerce between Marseille and the Mediterranean through the analysis of original contract documents. And as a uh, plot for this presentation, at first I would like to explain why I specifically chose the, to focus on the 13th century. And then I will go on and uh, talk about Marseille in the 13th century, uh, describing and explaining a bit uh, the society of Marseille at the time and also the status uh, that Marseille had at the time. And then I will go on and present some facts about the local and regional trade in southern France at the time. Uh, before I continue and going over to my main part, which will be my uh, main part of my research, uh, which uh, when will I present uh, facts about the development of the Mediterranean commerce in the 13th century Marseille, and then I will go over to the analysis of original documents uh, from uh, Blancard. Uh, it's a French uh, collection of original documents, uh, and its title is Document Anedit sur le commerce de Marseille au Moyen Âge. Uh, briefly translated, uh, unedited uh, documents of the commerce of Marseille in the Middle Ages. And um, I have brought uh, some examples just to show how this um, book is uh, structured and what type of documents we will find and how we can work with those documents in order to see the geographical extension and the range of products of Marseille's commerce in the Mediterranean in the 13th century. And then I will give, a, like I said, a primary uh, conclusion and then give an outlook to what I will focus on in the next uh, part of my work. So why am I focusing on the 13th century? Um, there are uh, some interesting facts about the 13th century and Marseille, at, uh, describing Marseille uh, from a scientific view, um, there are a lot of uh, scientists who say that it was one of the most active and decisive centuries in the history of Marseille's uh, commerce. And for example, we have the increase of the trade with distance lands, which I will show uh, later on. Um, we have the fact of the Crusader lands, which were still established in the time, and Marseille became a, trade, uh, a starting point and a crossing point for Crusaders going on to the Crusader lands. And we also have a commercial revolution, which we will see also during the analysis of the original documents. And we have also a creation of new local realms, which we will see when I will talk about the local and regional trade. And then also it's important to mention that, uh, yes, the 13th century is really um, an active and decisive century for Marseille, but if we look uh, onwards to the future, we will have some setbacks of the economic in the Mediterranean uh, region and especially also in Marseille, because in the 13th century, we have a change in politics, I won't uh, talk about this today, but also um, the plague, which also will affect in a negative way the development would, uh, which was made in the 13th century. So it's interesting uh, personally for me to look at the development of Marseille prior to the uh, pandemic uh, situation with the plague. Um, plus a uh, really important argument is, and this has been seen by a lot of work done by uh, scientifics, that there are uh, original sources which we can actually use about the 13th century. And this is also why I chose the 13th century, because there are original documents which are easy to find and which can uh, be a good base uh, in order to understand how the development uh, in the 13th century took place. So uh, let's talk uh, briefly about Marseille in the 13th century. Uh, first about the society and the status of the region. Um, uh, Marseille at the time is described as a stable region. Uh, we have a stable situation in the region. Um, as to uh, politics, where there was uh, some changes, like I said, 
Um, but um, we ha can see that there's an increase in population, which also underlines the fact that there is, uh, there are good, um, there's a good uh, stability, which uh, makes it possible for a development of the city and more people to going there to live. We have uh, increased from about 20,000 people to 30,000 uh, people at that time. We also have uh, sustained prosperity in agriculture, which is really important for the local and regional trade. And um, because of the prosperity in the region, it is possible for Marseille to expand uh, its urban centers. And also, which is a common um, remark on the region in France at the time, we can say that we have more centralized dominions at the time, which also benefits uh, Marseille. And we can see that uh, the merchant and trade classes uh, evolve in the time because there's a prosperity in agriculture, so this all benefits the local and regional trade, and there are more people who are um, investing themselves into uh, becoming merchants at the time. Uh, we also have the influence of uh, Pisan and Genuine uh, merchants at the time. Italians and Genu uh, Pisans and uh, Genuine merchants were um, at the time the uh, people who uh, had uh, the, were mo the most dominant in the Mediterranean region as it comes to uh, trade in the Mediterranean. Um, but still, as there were a lot of uh, people doing uh, trade in Marseille and they were Pisan and Genoese, um, this influenced also the way of thinking which uh, was of uh, the people of Marseille at the time. And uh, through this influence and through this um, beneficial situation, and uh, through the fact that there were more centralized dominions and there is an involvement of uh, those classes. Uh, this also allowed a change of local politics in Marseille. Um, in one way, we have uh, a political construction of the city which is new and which focuses more and uh, facilitates also, uh, faci um, makes it more easy um, to uh, focus on trade in that region. And also really important to mention is that Marseille becomes its own republic in the 13th century and is an own community with its own laws, which makes it uh, possible to be independent from other regions uh, as it comes to um, politic um, uh, domination. And um, like I said, we already can see uh, in other documents, which I won't present today, that uh, there is a dominance in the trading of uh, merchants. Uh, we have uh, another collection of, uh, which focuses on um, the training documents at the time, and we can see that there were different uh, types of training for people at the time, but we can see by looking at this, those documents that uh, the most training uh, which people did at the time was uh, to become a merchant, uh, which also underlines the fact that it was uh, part of, uh, an important part of the city's structure and the city's uh, economic, the trade uh, at the time. Now moving to uh, the second part of uh, describing Marseille, uh, the local and regional trade. Um, like I said, the agriculture was very prosper at the time, and this is why we can see a notable traffic in the 13th century. Um, plus, uh, we have a decreasing of risk of terrestrial uh, trade at the time, which will I explain a bit later. And then I would like to briefly point out that there were three main um, aspects of local trade and regional trade at the time. Uh, first, it was uh, the trade with salt, which was uh, one of the most important goods for Marseille, but um, due to the fact that the Italians had also a really strong interest and the dominancy of the uh, trading with salt in uh, the Mediterranean, for Marseille at the time it was only possible to make it more important on a local level. So this was a really um, important part of the local trade. And uh, we can also see this in documents, uh, contract documents with uh, Genoa, um, where uh, we can see that there's trade contact, but um, it is really important to mention that in this document it is also visible that uh, the Genoese tried uh, to keep their uh, dominancy in the trade of uh, um, Medi uh, in the Mediterranean with salt, and they uh, put um, rules and restrictions on the trade uh, in between, uh, so they were like um, controlling the salt trade out of uh, Genoa to briefly uh, um, summarize that. Then we also have the Foire de Champagne, the fairs in the county of Champagne, and we can see especially uh, contact between Marseille and three other cities, 
uh, Bar Provence and Troyes. And um, now I come back to the fact that there was a decreasement of terrest uh, the risk for doing terrestrial trade at the time because uh, those Foire de Champagne there were uh, really important at the time and very popular because those cities had protectional laws for merchants from other cities, uh, from, uh, like for example from Marseille, who uh, went there to do trade and they were protected by local law. They couldn't um, be... Um, they uh, couldn't be exposed to risk rights going and doing trade in another city and also their goods were protected and it was important that those merchants could freely go to the city and do the trade on the fairs. So this was a really um, important and um, part of uh, the local trade. The third one is the trade across the river which is uh, really important also for um, looking at the Mediterranean trade, uh, trade in the next part. And uh, there we can see that uh, most of the contact is between Marseille and Ar, Tarascon and Avignon, uh, which is also based on original documents because we have a lot of agreements between the cities, also for the protection of citizens, which um, uh, through them we can see that the, most of the contact was happening, uh, most of the trade was happening with those regions. And uh, most of the trade uh, was uh, food and textiles along the river uh, Rhone. And um, now we come uh, closely uh, over to uh, the Mediterranean aspect because um, which is also, Marseille is also described as an intermediary port between the cities uh, along the river Rhone and the Mediterranean. So for those cities it was really important and uh, beneficial to have a city located at the Mediterranean to do um, trade with other regions and to also be able to export their products to other regions outside of France. Um, so we can see here that uh, there was also a great development on local and regional trade at the time, but also that this depended and also co-independent on the um, Mediterranean trade, which I will go on talking about now. Um, before I come to analyze uh, the documents, I would like to briefly um, present some facts because uh, obviously there's a lot of work done already on the commerce in the 13th century and also on Marseille and we can see and this is like uh, what I just presented that there are a lot of beneficial factors which help the city grow on economy in the 13th century because we have this uh, return to safety in the city and region and another important point which I didn't mention before is that we can see a reduction of barbarian piratry in the Mediterranean in the 13th century so also this is uh, beneficial for uh, developing new trade in the Mediterranean because it is not that risky as it used to be and the risk of losing uh, the products to piratry is uh, more or less than the decades before. And uh, Marseille is also described, I'd just like to point out those uh, four points, is that Marseille is described as becoming uh, more uh, bigger than the uh, ports of saint Guy and Montpellier in southern France and it is described to become one of the principal markets for oriental products at the time. Um, it becomes a stopover city which we can uh, also see uh, in the uh, 12th century um, for ships going to Spain and North Africa but like I said it's also a stop and crossing point uh, for crusaders going on to the crusaders lands. Now, how can we, um, in my research, I would like to uh, see, like, this is uh, based on secondary literature so far, and my uh, question is, okay, how can we see this um, if we look at original documents? And there's one particular source which is really important, and this is, um, oops, sorry. This is Les Documents an sur le commerce de Marseille au Moyen Âge. Uh, of uh, Louis Blancard. He was a 19th century French archivist and numismatist and he collected in two works um, most uh, the, of the um, original trade documents which we have from the archives of uh, Marseille of the 13th century. And according to the scientist Sayus, uh, it, they have been uh, l'une des sources principales, sinon source principale sur le commerce et ses méthodes au XIIIe siècle dans le bassin occidental de la Méditerranée. Uh, he claims they are not only um, one of the principal sources in order to understand uh, the Mediterranean commerce at the time, 
but in the 13th century, but maybe the principal source. And I myself, uh, whilst um, reading those documents and seeing those documents, uh, can say that they are truly important in order to see where, uh, how the geographical extension of the trade of uh, Marseille in the 13th century um, is. So we have a lot of uh, doc commercial contracts in the document and I brought just some examples. Uh, this is how most of the uh, structure of the books, uh, of this uh, book looks like. We have the register always in French language so um, this is like uh, the part where they mention the most important informations. But then uh, most of the times we also have the original uh, contract documents uh, which are in Latin language, which I myself am not able to understand. So I'm glad that there are still like the original registers, which are also original documents. Um, so in this example, we have a uh, trade contact with uh, Cyprus. I, I'm not sure if you can see the colors, but I tried to underline um, like the important parts of the original documents where we can uh, see like where the trade contact was. So here we have a trade contract uh, with Cyprus and uh, if we look at the register we can see that there is uh, that's a command, uh, that's an order which is made and we can see the amount of money like the cost for this uh, order and um, we also see like on which um, the, oh, this order is about um, ordering uh, capes, 28 uh, capes out of Bayonne. And um, we see, uh, like I said, uh, where they should go to, to Cyprus, um, how much it costs, how many, and also um, on which boat they are supposed to be delivered. Um, and then we have also the, named, uh, the names of the involved persons in this uh, order. And also at the end, we have um, um, uh, uh, witnesses uh, of this contract. And this is what basically every register looks like in this document. And then we most of the times have also the um, original document in Latin language. I also brought uh, three other um, examples of documents. Uh, the upper left corner one is an example where we only would have the register, which means the original document in Latin is missing, but we still have this register which was put in the Arches of Marseille. And there we can see that there was established a, a, a trade contact with Arles and Rome. And here we have an order of uh, mixed uh, coins, and it's supposed to be delivered to Arles and then going on to Rome. And this is what this uh, order contract uh, was about. Then we have a second one here in the middle. Um, there we have a purchase of stringing yarn, and um, which uh, means asha in, Francais, uh, in French. And here we can see that they are ordered from Siena in Italian, uh, Siena in Ita Italian um, region. And uh, then we have, I brought a third uh, example to also show that they are not only like orders, they are also like other documents which um, are uh, collected in this work. And here we have a declaration of company, which means that we have two merchants who agreed to invest a certain amount of money whilst going on a ship to Acre. And uh, both agreed to um, use this amount of money to invest in this trip and to go there and to make trade with locals in Acre. And they will split either uh, the loss, if there are more loss, they will split the cost which uh, come on. If there's a benefit or profit out of it, they will both uh, split the profit. So this is like a declaration of company and they also have uh, witnesses because when they go back uh, so that uh, it's already clear how um, they will structure um, the benefit which they uh, hope to get out of this trip. Um, so this was just to um, briefly um, explain what we can do, what, what we can see uh, with the original documents. And um, because of the time, I now brought a map. And this uh, map shows um, if we have a look at all the documents, like this is about uh, a, the first collection has uh, almost 500 documents, the second one about 600, so there are a lot of documents. And um, we can see that uh, I tried to point it out the most important uh, regions where we can, whilst analyzing those documents and looking where the co trade contract were 
uh, which with uh, city uh, was mentioned, we can see that there were like that many uh, trade contacts already. And I used different colors because I wanted to point out um, cities where we have a lot of documents, which means that there's uh, more contract uh, trade going on and cities uh, with uh, less documents, which means, okay, they were important, but maybe not as important as the cities where we, had, where we can see that more trade was made to. And interest interestingly for the 13th century, because my uh, approach is also to look at the development, is that we also find in second literature, um, which analyzed uh, other documents um, of the uh, Mediterranean um, trade politics in the Mediterranean Sea, that uh, Marseille in the 13th uh, century gets privileges for uh, the Levant region, which for, uh, before that didn't happen. And if you look now at the colors, like uh, the trade contact with the most trade are the red lines, and you can see that, uh, that this underlines also the fact that there were privileges from Marseille in the Levant region because we can see we have a lot of original documents which mention trade with the Levant region. So one fact underlines the other, which is uh, really important to see if you want to look at the development and to say that Marseille became important because they could have those privileges and also they could have made uh, established uh, they could have established contact, but having privileges shows that Marseille becomes important for the trade in the Mediterranean with those regions. Um, I also briefly wanted to point out some of the range of products we can see in the documents. Uh, as to the import uh, for uh, trade coming into Marseille, we have a lot of spices, cotton, leather, almonds and corals. And um, like I said, this also depends on the local and regional trade and also um, on the trade context already that were already established with Northern Africa and Spain because they used or more likely it was to resell those um, imports in the Western Mediterranean or to trade it uh, through uh, the rest of France. As to the export, we can see that there are a lot of wine, leather, textiles and scarves uh, mainly mentioned in the documents and also mainly Flemish and Northern French products which also um, underlines the fact that also the Mediterranean trade for Marseille depended on the local and regional contracts they had in France. Um, now going to a first conclusion and to an outlook of my ongoing work, um, we can say um, what can we learn now from these original documents. Um, if we just look at those documents and the facts I presented today, uh, we could say that Marseille becomes more and more important as a trading point in comparison to um, before. Um, we have uh, trading contacts which we could see on the map with a lot of cities and countries in the Mediterranean and we can see that is Marseille is not only doing trade for its own but it's also a trading point for exchange and transfer of products. Um, we also can see with the uh, green dots on the map um, that we have a lot of new uh, countries and uh, which uh, means that there are an expansion of the trade network in the 13th century and um, that the Levant region, which prior was uh, the trade with the Levant region, was prior dominated by Italians and Genoese also. So uh, we can see that from uh, Marseille, the Levant region becomes also really important for the trade. But uh, like I said, we have to keep in mind the development of the local and regional trade because this influenced and also benefited uh, the possibilities which were given to Marseille because of the development of the local and regional trade and vice versa because having um, contacts in the Mediterranean also benefited the local and regional trade in France. This is what one would uh, conclude out of the work that um, with the secondary literature and only basing the research on those documents. But um, for my ongoing research I would like to question this fact, if Marseille is truly as important as it would appear according to uh, those original documents and according to the secondary literature we have. And um, it is important in order to do so to have a comparison to other cities in southern France, for example Montpellier, even though it's said that Mar Montpellier became um, a minor port in comparison to Marseille, Montpellier was still very important and I will also uh, go on in my research and focus on Montpellier because there was also political 
situations between Marseille and Montpellier because Montpellier didn't want to lose its position as a trading point for the Mediterranean because Marseille and Montpellier are really close to each other. Um, but we also have to widen the range of comparison to other cities in the Mediterranean, for example Barcelona, because Barcelona later on in the 14th and 15th century becomes the most uh, the uh, trading uh, region and the, uh, the Catalans become the most powerful when it comes to trade in the Mediterranean after the 14th, in the 14th and 15th century. So we have to keep also that in mind and to look also at the development of, uh, <coughs> of Barcelona in the 13th century because also there we can see that Barcelona and uh, Catalan becomes more and more important and wants to become bigger and bigger as the um, um, as a country in the Mediterranean for doing trade in the Mediterranean. And for this we have also to take into account original documents uh, of, tr of its trade context. Like we have seen in the map that there were a lot of cities which have uh, context between uh, Marseille and the cities, but if what would happen if you look at uh, cities where Marseille had contact, were they, was Marseille as important to this city as it was for Marseille? So um, in my future work I will have those comparisons which I have not done yet. And yes, so this was my, uh, the aim for today was to present the status and the society and uh, the development of the um, commerce looking just at Marseille, but my, uh, I will question that later on in my research and have a comparison to the cities I mentioned uh, before in order to be able to answer the question if Marseille was truly as important as it might seem if we have only this close look to those um, documents. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm finished with my talk. I hope I didn't talk too fast <laughs> or too much. And yeah, thank you so much uh, for your attention.